Hi, Ty. Congratulations on your promotion, and uh, good to meet with you today. Hey, thank you. Thank you. It's It's been a whirlwind, and obviously super excited about it. Thanks for getting on. I wanted to get right into the room. Um, got four guys projected, all with freshman status, but from three different recruiting classes. Can you kind of review each of the three you have on campus on scholarship right now? Brenton Strange, Theo Johnson, Tyler Warren, and what you're kind of seeing from that group in a post-Pat Fryermuth world. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously uh, super, super excited about all three of them. Um, you know, since, you know, I, I got the job, I mean, just watching these guys. We're really going back into last year, watching these guys prepare. Um, you know, Brenton Strange has, has done a great job, you know, last year um, stepping in, you know, and, and Theo as well when, when you know, Pat, Pat left. And, and I'll tell you what, you know, he's gotten better and better every day. Um, you know, he has good short area quickness and does some really nice things with the ball in his hand and, and knows how to play physical. And, you know, so Theo Johnson's a guy, I mean, he's, he's, he's looked great through winter workouts so far, you know, big, long, strong guy that can run and, and really do some explosive things. So, um, you know, really excited about him. You know, he's, he's, he's learned and he, he's, uh, I mean, he's progressed in that year that he's been here um, as a, as a uh, football IQ guy, as a, as a, blocker as a as a route runner um you know so really really excited about him and then tyler warren you know came in played a lot of high school quarterback and and really has progressed in the tight end position and one of one of the one of the best athletes on the team in my opinion i mean he he really can run he's strong he's physical um you know and you know not a not a he, he he's a he's a guy that doesn't doesn't say much but he works man he competes his tail off and uh, he's been really really impressive this far Good, uh, Mark Brennan with Fight On State. Hey, Tyler. Uh, uh, welcome back, too. Uh, nice, nice to see you. Hey, thanks. I appreciate it. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Hey, what what brought you back to Penn State? What were kind of your goals when, when you arrived back on campus last year? And could you have imagined everything playing out this quickly, getting getting a, a position job before you're 30? Thanks, man. Yeah, you know, I, I think that the reason I came back here for, was for an opportunity like this. I know, um, you know, when I when I left Penn State as a player, you know, it was always my goal to get back here, you know, as a coach. I, I always knew I wanted to get coach. I wanted to coach. My dad was a high school coach for 30 years, and so I knew I wanted to coach. And when I got into it, you know, this was my ultimate goal to get back to a place that gave me so much. Um, you know, a great university like Penn State, and and obviously this is home for me. So, you know, that's that was my mindset. You know, going into last year, you know, I wanted to prepare myself uh, for this opportunity. Now, obviously, you know, didn't see that coming this quickly, um, but uh, you know, I, I I tried to prepare every day um, like I was one of the position coaches, and so um, you know, I think that ultimately helped me to uh, succeed and 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 getting the the tight ends job here and. Um, but you know, it, it had always been a goal of mine to come back here. You know, it, I love this place more, more than anything. Um, uh, my family, you know, and obviously had a, had a great, um, career here and, and made lifelong friends and, and got a degree. And so, I mean, I, I owe this place so much that, you know, I, I hope through my, my coaching, I can give back, uh, to this university. So it's, it's always been a, a dream of mine. So like, I wake up every every morning and pinch myself, and I'm tickled, man. So I'm 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 excited to be here coaching the tight ends, and um, so I, you know it's it like I said, it, it's been you know something I've always wanted to do, and and uh, you know try to prepare myself for. Go to Greg Pickle with Penn Live and Audrey Snyder. You're on deck. Hi, thanks so much for your time today. Yeah, thank you. What did the work you did from a recruiting perspective last year, how did that help you set the stage for what you'll do now as a position coach? And what areas of responsibility will you have in recruiting now that you are on the on-field staff? Yeah, I, I think, you know, it it, uh, it helped out a lot, you know, because I could see how our organization runs from a recruiting perspective. Um, also allowed me to, you know, create those relationships Um you know, in the, in the recruiting world and, and with student athletes and, and those kind of things. So I think that that helped out tremendously, um, you know, and obviously my learning of, of areas and, and, you know, how we do things here at Penn State. So I think that was a big part of it, that year of growth, um, you know, and working with you know, our de- recruiting department and our position coaches throughout that year, um, you know, getting to know all the, all the key people. 
So um, moving forward, I'll, I'll have a lot of the, the same areas Tyler Bowen did. Um, so I'll kind of move right into that area. Um, but uh, yeah, so I mean, this year, this past year has been you know tremendous and in, in allowing me to, to figure out how you know how we do things here at Penn State and kind of my own personal spin on stuff. And so that's been a big part of it. Next, we'll go to Audrey Snyder with The Athletic and Donnie Collins, you're on deck. Hey, Tyler, welcome back. Hey, um, thank you, thank you. Wanted to ask you about um, what exactly were you doing last year behind the scenes? Because those analyst roles are, are kind of varied from place to place. Um, what were some of the things that you were doing, and how do you think maybe that translates this year? Yeah, you know, I think, um, you know, one of the big things I was working hand in hand with our position coaches, whether it was you know, game planning and, and those kind of things um, off the field to, uh, you know, giving my input with those things and, and also the recruiting piece of it. Um, you know, so, I mean, those were two big things I think uh, obviously, you know, Coach Franklin looks for in, in coaches and being able to handle those things and, and being relationship driven um, with our current team and, and with, you know, recruiting. So um, that was a big piece of what I was doing behind the scenes as far as, you know, working with the offense and, and working with the position coaches, working and recruiting with our staff um, were kind of the, the main pieces that I was doing um, in this past year in that analyst role. Let's go to Donnie Collins uh, with Scranton, and then we got Parth Padia with Center Daily Times on deck. Hey, Donnie. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing, Donnie? Doing well. Um, this is obviously from when you played, when you started coaching to now, it's, it's a very different time in, in college football with, with, you know, players have more freedom, things like that. It, it, does that put kind of a, an, an onus on getting off to a good start, uh, that, that, that first meeting with, with, with the new position group? What, what was that like? Having, number one, meeting these, you know, these guys and telling them your plans, and, and, and number two, replacing a, a guy as popular as, as, as Tyler was. Yeah, you know, I, I think uh, fortunate for me, it was it was a pretty smooth transition because I'd been here, you know, so I knew those guys, you know, on and off the field and, and had developed relationships with them already. Um, obviously, you know, Tyler and I were very close. So, you know, I, I got to know those guys very well, whether, you know, at team dinners or those kind of things. So you, you get to develop those relationships. And that's what I tried to do last year. So it, it wasn't too hard of a transition as far as getting to know the guys, you know, when, when, uh, when I got the job, you know, I tried to make sure I took some personal one-on-one -on -one time with each of them, talk to their talk to their parents, talk to their high school coaches, and just really uh, make sure everybody knew, you know, I was in this for the right reasons. Obviously, you know, I learned a lot from from my father, you know, and a lot of the, the coaches along the way and guys that I played with, and you know, so being able to manage all the personalities and and um, you know and, and develop those relationships. So I think that was a big piece of it, and then. You know, obviously, um, you know, replacing Tyler Bowen, you know, it, it's something I got to spend a lot of time with him, um, you know, getting to know, you know, knowing how he's teaching things, learning from him and also seeing some things from from other people I like. And, you know, I mean, so it, it was a pretty fairly smooth transition because I had relationships with those guys already. Um, and then obviously, you know, knowing how they had been coached and, and, you know, what Tyler, you know, was teaching and those kind of things and how it can apply to, to our offense and, and things that, you know, I believe in. So, you know, the buy-in's been easy, you know, because I, because I, I knew these guys, I know these guys and, and have gotten to continue to, to know them better and know their families. And cause I think that's a key piece in, in getting the guys to play their best for you is developing that big relationship where, you know, you trust one another. I mean, that's a, a key thing in, in football is trust. You know, you, you, you know, the guys trust trust me to, that I want the best thing for them and I'm going to help them reach their goals. And then, you know, I trust them to go out and do their assignment and play their hardest. And so I think, you know, we, we built, we're, we're building on that, you know, every day. So um, those are kind of the, the ways I've approached it. Let's go to Parth Apadier with Center Daily Times and Rich Garcella, you're on deck. Hey, Ty, I hope you're doing well. I yeah, actually saw in the OPSU bio that you're a Raleigh guy. Yeah, I'm a Raleigh guy. I'm, I'm from Bunn, North Carolina, Bunn High School. I, I just say Ra Raleigh's a little bit easier for everybody to, to know where it's at. That's my hometown, man. I just moved here from uh, Raleigh in October. Okay, where'd you go to high school? I went to Southeast Raleigh. Okay, so so I went is? to Bunn. My wife went to Wakefield, and then I, you know, I was at NC State for a little bit, so I know that area well. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I wanted to ask, with you um, having seen Tyler Bowen kind of up close and personal last season, um, what are some things that, you know, kind of he did, the way he could carry himself on that job that, 
something that you take away that you've learned um, that you want to apply to your, you know, how you carry yourself on the job? Yeah, I, I think obviously Tyler was always um, very professional, and, and he was he was really smart football football wise. I mean, he, he did a great job learning and, and continue to grow as a coach. You know, sometimes guys can get stagnant and set in their ways about the way they want things done. And there's got to be a base belief system, but you got to evolve, you know, and, and to get things done in the, the, the best way. And so, you know, I, I just watched him grow. You know, I've known Tyler for, for since, uh, you know, we GA'd here together um, under Coach Frank. So I've known him for a long time and me and him have always talked about different techniques and those kind of things for a long time. So it's, you know, it's been, uh, I learned a ton from him, um, you know, and obviously worked really closely with, with him uh, last season. But, uh, yeah, I mean, just I, I, Tyler's a great relationship guy, and I, and I think he'll take that down to Jacksonville with him. He gets guys to believe and, and buy in and, and what he's teaching, and obviously that starts with knowing what he's talking about, but also, you know, caring about people, you know, off the field, you know, and, and you know, kind of like I've been saying this whole time, developing that relationship and trust with guys. And so, you know, I think that'll, that'll carry over with him, and, you know, something that I'll be, you know, I, I do as well. And so, you know, I think those are, those are all great things that he did and that I learned from. Go to Rich Garcella with the Reading Eagle and John Pichon, you're on deck. Hi, Ty. Thanks for doing this today. Yeah, thank you. Ty, when did you first know that you wanted to be a coach? You know, obviously growing up with your dad, as one, you know, what did you learn from him? What takeaways, either by watching him or by something that he told you? Um, you know, I, I think I, I wanted to be a coach really when I when I got into high school and, and played for him. It's kind of when I, I, I knew that that's what I wanted to do, um, and, and it carried over to college, and and I, I got to be around other coaches, you know, who coached me throughout my life and see how they were they did things and you know what 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 I could learn from that. But I, I think the biggest thing that I took from him, you know, we were, we were a small 1A high school, you know, actually moved up to 2A, but there's never two job, never a job that's, that's too small. You know, I, I, I'd watch him walk the, walk the parking lot, picking up trash, putting it in the trash can, you know, and, you know, there could have been somebody else who did that, but what, there, I mean, do it for yourself. You know, I watched him paint the line. I used to paint the lines when I was 10 years old, actually, you know, I, I messed some up a couple times and it didn't go over too well. So, you know, I, I grew up with that, you know, cutting the grass and, and, and all. And I, and I learned a lot from that because, you know, I think a lot of times, especially at a place like Penn State, I mean, you know, we have unbelievable resources here. Um, but but there, there's never a job too small. And so learn that from him and then, you know, learn from, you know, one of my line coaches, Coach McWhorter. Um, you know, about building relationships. I mean, he, he was an unbelievable <clears throat> guy to do that. And, and, you know, I watched him do that with, with you know, obviously in some, some tough times and, and how he handled that. And um, But but across the board, you know, every coach that I played for, you know, so I try to pick up a little thing. And every coach that I worked for, you know, moving forward, try to pick up a couple of things that, uh, you know, that I could learn from. Um, but I'd say that's kind of the big one that stuck out to me. Um you know, when I was a kid watching my dad and I saw how much fun he had with it, with, uh, you know, coaching the players. He always said, you know, he, his favorite times was, you know, Sunday through Thursday game day. You know, they just they had to go out and do it. Game days, you know, that, he, he enjoyed the daily process. And I think that's kind of the, the you know, thing I'm trying to take, you know, that I, I enjoy, too, is, is those daily the daily process of, of getting guys better and. And you can see it, you know, day after day after day. If you're putting in, you know, the right work and doing the right things, you can see that, that you know, guys grow. Um, and then how much fun you can have with the staff and with, with uh, you know, the camaraderie. There's really nothing like a team, I don't think, in life. You know, a team is special. And so, you know, I always knew I want to be a part of that. You know, when, when I finished when I finished playing, it wasn't the, the fourth overtime win against Michigan that I, I missed or, or – remembered the best you know you all the games kind of go into one after after a bit of time but it's the the time in the locker room when somebody you're playing trash can basketball or what you know so you, so you, you those moments stick out and, and being a part of a team I think is a, a big deal of that and uh, you know something that you know I, I love and you know one of the reasons I'm coaching so next question is John Petitnock with the football letter and Elton Hayes you're on deck Hey, Ty, hey, congrats on the news and appreciate your time today. Hey, thank you. Appreciate you. 
Hey, you've mentioned relationships a lot. Um, and when the news was announced, you had teammates like Jesse James, John Urschel go on social and, and really congratulate you. I, I wanted to ask on a personal level, what did that mean to you? And have you had other guys kind of reach out to you just behind the scenes, whether it's a text or an email and just kind of say congrats and looking forward to, to, to the new role with you? Oh, yeah. You know, it, it was amazing. You know, when the news came out, you know, all the support of the Letterman and, and you know, it, it means so much to me because those guys mean so much to me. You know, whether I played with them or not, you know, obviously the guys I played with, you know, I, you know, we went through ups and downs and, and twists and turns. And, you know, those guys mean the world to me, you know, because because there's again, there's nothing like a team. I mean, those guys, you know, you're, you're spending 24 hours with guys. And, you know, so it's it was really special for me to be able to come back and represent. Uh, my alma mater and a, and a place that, again, that, that has done so much to me and my, or for me in my life. And, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it was, it was awesome getting, getting the, you know, those guys reaching out and some guys reconnecting. It's been a little while since I talked to guys and, you know, sharing a story or, or whatever it's been, man, it, it was, you know, awesome. And I, and I enjoyed every minute of it and, you know, just uh, to, to really, you know, connect with, with those guys and, and see the support they have for me and, um, you know, and so I know I got, you know, thousands of, of guys that have my back, you know, here, here at Penn State and, you know, had my back when I was here playing and, and it will always, I mean, it's a special type of relationship uh, between two, between those guys and, and I. And so it was really neat, you know, seeing all that, you know, um, John, Jesse, all those guys and, you know, and, and obviously, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know, you know, John's obviously been wildly successful since he's left the NFL and, you know, working on his, his PhD at MIT and, you know, and so it, me and him talk quite a lot. So it, it was awesome just to, to catch up with him again. And, and uh, you know, so, yeah, it was, it was, it was, you know, real moving and, you know, I really appreciate it. Go to Ellen Hayes with CNHI Pennsylvania and Frank Bodan and you're on deck. Hey coach, uh, congratulations on coming back home. Hey, thank you very much. Hey. Um, obviously, you know, you take this position with the hopes of, um, you know, success being measured in wins and losses for the program, uh, for your players. I just want to ask you personally, uh, what are you hoping to glean from this experience and what does success to you, you know, how would that be measured and what does success to you look like in, outside of wins and losses? Yeah, you know, it, it's always been one of those things for me. Um, you know, I, I measure success in, in the type of men that, you know, we'll, we'll produce here from Penn State. And, and that was something, you know, when I was a player that, that was always talked about. Obviously, we're, you know, we're measured by wins and losses and, and got to produce on Saturdays. But I also so want to see the guys that are in, in the tight end room, you know, 10 years from now still producing as a father, as a, as a husband, as a son, um, you know, a, a business leader, you know, whatever they, they decide, you know, because I do believe, you know, my, my, my job as a coach to help those guys reach their goals and dreams, whether it's athletically. Uh, academically, socially, um, and, and take those guys where they can't take themselves. And, you know, and so I, I, I measure success, obviously, on wins and losses. You know, we, we have a job to do here at Penn State, and we're, we're, we're going to do that. But also measure it down the road, you know, by how many guys are, are um, you know, doing doing the best they can at whatever job it is. You know, if, if uh, you know, they're in the NFL, great. You know, if they're um, a CEO of a Fortune 500 company, great. If they're a high school football coach, great. I want them to be the best at whatever they're going to do. And, you know, so I, I also measure success by that, about the type of type of guys that, that play for us here at Penn State and go on to, 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 to be great in whatever they choose to do. Frank Bodani, York Daily Record, and Joe Giuliano, you're on deck. Got it, Frank? There you yeah, go. how's that? Can you hear me, Ty? I can hear you. Hey, don't good worry, to see I do that all the time. Don't worry about that. And that's all right. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Hey, being an offensive lineman at Penn State in college, talk about maybe how that playing that position at that place has helped you become a coach. And, and maybe can you share a little bit about You said you talked to John Urschel a good bit. How has how's that helped? Yeah, you know, um, so obviously, you know, playing the center position here um, helped me a ton, you know, just from – Knowing the ins and outs of the offense, and and um, you know, but but really, you know what what these guys are going through, you know, with with their schedules, with their daily lives, and and at Penn State, you know, I think that's a, a big you know advantage I have of 
you know, I, I truly, you know, know this place and know what it's like to, to be a student athlete. Maybe not in this day, day and age. It's a little different, but, you know, it, help those guys manage all the things they have going on. Um, but also, you know, from that center position, you know, getting to learn IDs and all those things that, that play off in the run game and pass game. And, um, but so, I mean, and, and I think I developed, you know, playing offensive line here, or toughness and, and, you know, willing to, to go the extra mile and whatever I do. I mean, but I think that was, you know, you, you can, you know, glean that from a lot of different positions. It's, it's how, you know, we were coached here and how, um, you know, you, you, you continue to learn and develop. Um, as far as John goes, you know, I talked to him last weekend. He's doing well. You know, he's, he's got his wife and daughter, and, um, you know, he's, he's down in D.C. He's doing awesome. But, uh, you know, he wrote a book not too long ago. I mean, so he, he's doing unbelievable. You know, I saw him actually, um, what was it, uh, right before the pandemic, um, I think it was like my second or third week up here last year as an analyst. He he still comes up to Penn State and uh, does does some math work and stuff around here. And so he's doing really well and, and family's doing well and, you know, obviously achieving, you know, high, high level in, in, in the math world. You know, some I, I can't really articulate on, on what all that is, you know, but he's doing well. So uh, yeah, it's been awesome, you know, kind of be back here on the East Coast and, and be close to them and uh, hopefully uh, – you know, once once uh, everything clears up and hopefully gets back to somewhat normal, get to see them a little bit more and get them around here at Penn State and um, around our guys and, and all that. So. Okay, we got time for a few more. Uh, Joe Giuliano, Philadelphia Inquirer, and Bob Flounders, you're on deck. Hey, Ty, good to see you again. Good to see you. Um, I want to go back to your playing days. Obviously, you were there when the uh, sanctions hit and uh, really uh, was so uh, – it was going to be a bad time for the program. What do you remember about how you and your teammates bonded together to make sure that the program stayed viable? And what do you feel like now that you're back at a, at a program that's now, again, nationally prominent and successful? Yeah, it, you know, obviously, you know, going through those times, I mean, I, I think the biggest thing is, you know, we, we, all, all each had, we all had each other's backs. You know, we had our players' backs, our coaches' backs, and, and so it was a neat time to just kind of see that bond of, of, a, of a team come together. And I think that's you know, was ultimately a little bit of why there was so much, you know, support when I got the job and, and, you know, those guys reaching out because we were so close, you know, obviously unprecedented times can, can really bring people together. Um, you know, and, and I think the biggest thing is we wanted to play for Penn state and, and, uh, you know, we, you talk to anybody who played on those teams, we love this place. And so it was a really, really, uh, neat experience as far as at, from a team bonding, you know, in those, those couple years. And, um, you know, so obviously, you know, now returning to, to Penn State, I mean, you know, this is Penn State. And, and you know, I got to watch from afar, obviously, the, the job Coach Franklin and the staff was doing, you know, from, from 14 on. And, and, you know, they did an unbelievable job, um, you know, really, uh, you know, bringing Penn State back to national prominence. Prominence and, and so you know it was fun to watch from afar. And now obviously fun to be a part of, of what's going on, and, and I'm excited for the future. Um, obviously, you know the, the the 2012 and 13 teams get a lot of credit for for sticking around at Penn State, and but I'd also include those 14 and 15 teams. A lot of those guys who you know were were older on those teams were guys who stuck with us older guys, you know, in, th in 12 and 13 and stayed here at Penn State and continued to develop and, and uh, you know, really put Penn State on the map, you know, those 14, 15, 16 teams. A lot of those guys were, were young guys, you know, who stuck with us. Like, you know, obviously, Deion Barnes and Wendy Laurent, guys who are, are here on our staff now, you know, were, were young at those times and, and pressed on and continued to fight on. And um, really, you know, it, it, it was fun to watch those guys grow and, and, you know, those teams grow and the program grow to where, where we're at now. Bob Flounders, Penn Live, and then Nubias, you'll be the last question. Ty, can you hear me? I can hear you. Ty, uh, welcome back. Um, you. you mentioned you mentioned a lot of influence, and you, you mentioned your dad when it comes to coaching. You, I think you mentioned Matt McWhorter, who was at Penn State when you were there. Obviously, you mentioned Tyler Bowen. Um, I was just curious um, – are you still in touch with Bill O'Brien, number one? And can you maybe give me an example or two of kind of how he influenced you, whether it was as a player or as a, as a future coach? Um, he was a pretty 
Uh, fascinating guy when he was at Penn State. I just didn't know if maybe he kind of shaped you a little bit. Yeah, he, he definitely did. You know, obviously, you know, we all we all went through, you know, those times together. Um, and and I, I've been in contact with him ever since I, I, I finished playing. And, you know, unfortunately, never got a chance to go down to Houston when he was there, um, you know, to watch training camp or anything like that. But um, he has been unbelievable to, to me and my wife and family. And, I, you know, you probably you guys might not even know this, but Coach O'Brien used to recruit fun high school when he was at Duke. So, yeah, he, he – uh, they, you know, I, they didn't recruit me. I was too short, but they, uh, you know, so he had a relationship with my dad and they still communicate and all that. So, you know, I, I've learned, a, I, I learned a ton from him when I was here, you know, just about doing your job well and, and um, playing the way, you know, playing the game the way it should be played. And, you know, he was a, he was a big proponent and um, stuff I learned from, from coaching the way he prepared and, and the way he coached our team. And um, so, you know, obviously, um, you know, I, I learned a ton from him and, and have continued, obviously, to follow his career. And, you know, he's been involved in mine. It, it's been awesome to, to watch him and obviously uh, continue to learn from him and, and play for him. My time for him, you know, playing for him was, was awesome. And so, yeah, I learned a ton from him. Yes, sir. Our last question is Dubias Wilbur, Pittsburgh Post Gazette. Hey, um, thanks for doing this. Also, Greg, thank you as well. Um, Tyler, um, what has been the biggest change in college football from when you were a player? Because it, it really wasn't that long ago, but time moves quickly to what the college football game is now. Um, you know, that's, a, that's a good question. I, you know, obviously it wasn't too long ago, but, um, you know, I think the, the, the game has, has changed a little bit from when, you know, I played here, you know, as far as, you know, there's a lot of uh, wide open offenses and, and, you know, all those kind of things. you got to score every time you touch the ball. And, you know, obviously when I, I remember it being here, it was more of a grinded out Big Ten deal. Um, you know, that that so that's been a little bit of the, the change and, and, you know, utilizing more tempo and those kind of things throughout college football. Um, you know, so offensively that's one, one, one change. You know, and, and the other thing I think, uh, you know, just – the resources that that we're able to to give our student athletes you know like i remember when when i think it was I don't know, early on in my career you know when we couldn't give you know we couldn't get food and meals and those kind of things as much as you know we're able to provide for our guys and really support them nutritionally um i think the support here is unbelievable academically and obviously athletically there just wasn't the, as, as big a support system in cotton throughout college football so you know, I think that's, that's a big change that, you know, we really are trying to give these guys um, the best things we can possible to help them reach their goals. Um, so, I, you know, that's one thing. When I came back to, to the Lash building, and what was it? You know, I, I was actually came back three years ago, three years ago for John Russell's wedding and came by. I saw Tyler and Coach Franklin and, um, you know, and, and walked through the building. Just all the things that we have to support our student athletes to, to help them reach, you know, their fullest potential. Um, is a big one. I was shocked that, you know, obviously all the things that we could give them and, and, and all the, you know, how the last building looked, you know, I hadn't stepped foot in here in 10 years, you know, when I got on my coaching career and, and all that. But uh, yeah, I think those are two, two big things.